What's up guys, it's been a while since I've made a nutrition related video and I want to make more and plan on making several. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the difference between ketosis, specifically nutritional ketosis, to distinguish it from ketoacidosis, which is a problem uh, related to diabetes. I'm not going to be talking about that. This is obviously not medical advice. So nutritional ketosis versus being keto adapted or keto adaptation. And the irony in making this video is that Although I'm keto adapted at the moment, I'm, I'm not in ketosis. And the reason why is because today is a cheat day. This is just happy or unhappy circumstance. Usually when I'm on track for one for a while, and I have been for a while, nutrition-wise, diet-wise, uh, I, I would take one day out of the month and I'll just eat whatever the hell I want. Pretty much that. And that's what I'm doing today. Had some um, had an apple, some blackberries, had a pastry, had coffee with tons of milk. You know, just eat. Could be worse, but for me, that's a cheat day. So there's a bit of irony to making me in this video, but it's also illustrative in a, in a certain sense because I'm keto adapted, but not in ketosis. So what's the difference? Well, nutritional ketosis is something that almost every human being goes through. Nutritional ketosis uh, kicks in when your glycogen reserves, the, the that's basic glucose convert to glycogen in the muscle and the muscle and liver are essentially depleted or more or less depleted. And you start producing these things called uh, ketones. And let's say you do intermittent fasting, just as an example, and you, um, your time window is eight in the morning to two in the afternoon, right? And you stop eating then, right? And then sort of two in the afternoon, Till eight in the morning the next day, you're not eating anything. By the time you wake up, assuming you can sleep, unlike myself, then yeah, you're gonna be in nutritional ketosis. That doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be keto adapted. If you do a day fast, several days fast, you're definitely gonna be in nutritional ketosis. And all that really means, in this sense, is that when your glycogen reserves I mean, I'm really simplifying. Glycogen is not sugar, but so your sugar reserves are depleted. The body will then switch to using ketones and, and lipids, fats, uh, as an energy source. But as has been pointed out, it was pointed out in the talk with Clive uh, about the anaerobic uh, nature of the cancer metabolism, cancer cell metabolism, uh, the body loves glucose. Uh, setting aside alcohol... Glucose is the preferred energy source uh, for the body. In, preferred in the sense that it is the most readily available. It's the one it's going to uh, try to utilize first. Right? Alcohol is a different story. Maybe you actually use alcohol before any other macronutrient, which is weird, but we'll talk about that in another video. And <clears throat> there are a lot of reasons for this. Uh, it's, for one thing, the brain... Even the brain requires, even if you're totally keto adapted, the brain still requires glucose. But that can be covered through gluconeogenesis, which is the process of synthesizing glucose out of certain amino acids, particularly branched chain amino acids. And uh, it can use the glycogen uh, reserves in the liver, which are kind of the last resort. But yeah, keto, keto nutritional ketosis is a state that many people are in when they just haven't eaten anything for a long time. That doesn't mean you're keto adapted because the body still prefers glucose. Now, what is keto adaptation? Keto adaptation uh, is not identical to being nutritional ketosis in the sense that when you're keto adapted, your preferred energy source uh, becomes fat and, and ketones. Uh, that is, you, you use them more efficiently than you would if you were just not eating for a day, and which would be nutritional ketosis in that case. But without without the keto adaptation. So your body's still kind of hungry for glucose. And when you're keto adapted, ketogenically adapted, then you use these energy sources, uh, ketones and, and lipids, uh, much more efficiently, and you actually prefer using them. That's what, and, and the problem with keto adaptation is it takes quite a, quite a while. For me, it takes about a month before I'm really keto adapted, and that's a month without cheating, without strain, uh, from from the diet. And I, I, I started going hardcore ketogenic probably a month and a half ago, so it took a little longer, and I decided today I was throwing a cheat day. You know, what, 
once a month, that's fine because I am keto adapt at the moment. Um, the muscles are just going to be storing the glucose as glycogen. Um, you know, the, you, you get you get greater levels of insulin sensitivity when you're a ketogenic. And I could have pushed it further and just waited, but to be honest, I slept like shit, and I just thought, hey, fuck it, I'm not going to be doing very much today. I'm just going to try to relax. So I'll just enjoy the food as well. The problem, as I said, most people have is it takes a really long time to, relatively speaking, weeks at the very least, to become keto adapted. And they kind of fall off the bandwagon early, early on, you know, after the first week, second week, even the third week. You really need to take approximately, in my experience, about a month. It's going to vary. Just like different individuals require different uh, amounts of carbs in order to enter ketosis. There are people who need to go sub 20, that is below 20 grams. Some people can go at 50, there are people who can go on 80 grams of carbs in the ketosis and then, and then become keto adapted. I'm not one of them. I need to stay around uh, 20, 30, probably maximum 40. And the consistency is the key. <clears throat> the longer you're in this sort of semi-permanent state of ketosis, barring cheat days, the better you get at being keto adapted. And I've never went, I've never gone an entire year in this state but I, I hear stories of people in long and it's just they become very very efficient at at using ketones and fats as a as a fuel source for the entire body remember your body cells <clears throat> all of them can not cancer cells but you can run on on lipids and ketones it's a it's a it's an evolutionary adaptation it's a nutritional adaptation and it's one that works but as I said, the biggest issue is making it through that extensive period of time to get to the point where you're keto adapted, to get to the point where, yeah, if you want to throw on a cheat day, and I'm not going to pretend to you that the cheat day is doing something for me, it's boosting my metabolism. There's no, that's just bro science. There's no evidence that me carving up right now is going <laughs> to increase my metabolic rate or make me feel better. And if anything, I slept like shit and had to drug myself to get to sleep. Um, I'm just going to feel groggy, and I do, because I all of the serotonin production. We could talk about the carbs and serotonin production another time. I'm, this is just for you know pure enjoyment for the dopamine effect, you know. But you need to spend a significant amount of time prior to that, that is prior to to your cheating in in essentially in constant keto, in nutritional ketosis, which is achieved by limiting your carbohydrate intake, and that's going to vary from individual to individual. It's something that people confuse quite a lot. Now, I'm the first one to say, and I plan on making a really important video, I think, sometime in the future on on different kinds of carb metabolisms, that is, people from different parts of the world. There are racial and ethnic differences, and some people from different racial profiles uh, digest carbs and, and utilize them differently. But in general, I'm not a dogmatist when it comes to this stuff. Uh, people have been, and I'm definitely going to make a video on this, been looking for the holy grail of nutrition. You know, what is the universe, nutritional universal, whatever. I don't believe that exists, not for the individual. <clears throat> I can tell you full on for me, uh, ketogenic diet is probably best. And I'd even argue that for a large portion of the population, because a lot of people just don't metabolize carbs particularly well. And there are all kinds of biochemical things going on that, that, that inhibit the polysis, that is the, the burning of fat, um, when you're consuming lots of carbs. Remember, you have these antagonistic hormones, insulin and glucagon. I've talked about glucagon before. We know what insulin is. It's created in the liver, uh, liver lowers blood sugar levels. Glucagon is the opposite. You have very low insulin levels. Glucagon goes up. Glucagon helps to free up uh, fats, lipids, so the body can use it. And I think that's part of it. And there are a lot of reasons why, and ethnic reasons, why well, people who don't come from a, a, an area of the world originally where carbs and starches were constant. So I'm not going to just jump on the, the religious bandwagon. Ketogenic is, is for life. Ketogenic is the best thing ever. It might be the best thing ever for you as an individual, but it might not be. Look, there are plenty of people, it seems, that do really well in veganism. I, I don't. I tried veganism for about three weeks once. Hardcore fucking veganism. It was, I, I, I didn't feel good. It was, I didn't lose weight, nothing. So 
Um, and people say I'm doing it wrong, but no, I think people really are individual when it comes to their metabolism. You have a, an ethnic profile, for example, and I, I don't have any links to this at the moment because I want to make a separate video, but it's been shown in several studies that East Asians uh, have a, a slightly a different kind of carbohydrate metabolism to your standard European, for example. And this is going to have a profound effect on how people react to different foods and, 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 and types of things that they eat. And here on YouTube in particular, in the fitness, well, not so much in the fitness, but sort of the nutrition uh, arena genre of these people making universal claims. There are these people, crazy people like Freely the Banana Girl, Dorian, uh, Durian Ryder, and you know, Carbop, Go Vegan. Now these guys always forget to mention these two. They're these. They're basically Charlotte and Dorian, Durian Ryder, and Freely the Banana Girl. They um they they cycled. This, like, 15 kilometers a day. I mean, they're, they're constantly active. Uh, Freelease claimed you can eat 30 bananas a day. I mean, this is clearly absurd, and there's some vegans who realize it's absurd, but I'm not going to jump on any uh, nutritional bandwagon and say, this is the be-all and end-all. This video is or was about the difference between keto adaptation and ketosis and, and being in nutritional ketosis, but that doesn't mean that I'm saying you should do this. If you... One thing I would propose, everyone I think should try out different forms of diet to see what works best for them. Maybe you do really well with starches. Maybe you do really well with with keto. Maybe you do really well uh, as a vegan. Who knows? Um, but by now, at more or less age 40, I kind of know my body pretty well and what I react to and what I don't. And if you're taking the time, you can realize these things. So the final message in this video, in addition to it describing the difference between long-term keto adaptation and being in nutritional ketosis, is that there is no holy grail of nutrition uh, that's universally prescribable to each and every individual. Um, there's definitely some general trends that are universal, you know, the way our bodies work in a, in a simple sense. But beyond that, once you move that beyond the, you know, when you eat carbs, you know, the pancreas creates insulin or when you eat X, you get Y. It's in the, the specifics, the devil's in the details as to how your body goes about it and how efficiently it goes about it. So I thought this video would be helpful for people who have been sending me queries and questions as well as I want to uh, make my point about my own stance on nutrition, that it's not a religious one. I don't think, oh, keto till you die. It's whatever works best for you. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I will check you guys out at a later date. Bye-bye.